Hello, uh, I'm Thomas, uh, last name Matas, and uh, I'm one of the people who are participating in this uh, exchange, which uh, infinity sequence on the theme uh, law and utopia. Can there be laws in utopia, or can that can there be a utopia without laws, or with laws, or can that can there be a utopia anyway? And I think, of course, that. Um, um, Reese and Chelsea made an excellent presentation and brought up simple questions, simple uh, uh, thoughts about the whole uh, theme, and uh, so we enjoyed listening to them. Stephen, of course, introduced the other question, which is, can there really exist a utopia? And uh, went back to uh, good old Thomas More, who uh, wrote the original book. He wrote it in Latin, it's been translated into English and other languages. And uh, the title, of course, is Greek, and it does mean no place. Uh, and numerous other people have um, written kind of stories of fantasy uh, like uh, Moore's Utopia. Uh, really, what he meant to say was that this island, not that it was nowhere, some have suggested he was actually thinking of Bermuda, which had just recently been discovered and was thought to be very beautiful and wonderful climate and all. And uh, be that as it may, but his real point was that it wasn't in this place. And he was just speaking, of course, about his island, that is, Britain. Uh, his point was that it certainly isn't here. And in fact, he is not an observer, that is, Thomas More, did not claim to be an observer of this island, this ideal society, but rather a listener to somebody who had been there and had lived there for a while and had also traveled in many other places. Uh, a man by the name of Raphael who wasn't looking for money or power and had a uh, strongly anti-war sentiment, so very much a, a pacifist. Now, in this book by Thomas More, uh, you have this kind of ironic touch to it. It's, it's, uh, it's a work also of satire. We have to remember that. And it's not like he's saying that this is the way things are and uh, this is the way they should be and uh, therefore we can uh, try to put all this into practice and, and make it real in the real world. Uh, no, he's simply saying that uh, listen to what I've written here, and I hope it makes you think, it makes you think about uh, the real world you live in and how it can be improved, or if it is possible to improve this real world. Um, he, this conversation with Raphael, and he's trying to tell Raphael to uh, go ahead and, and join up with some, um, with some uh, ruler and give him good advice because you're so smart and you've been so many places you'd be able to really help him govern better his country he said no i'm not going to be anyone's slave i want to be free that's uh, that's the most important thing so i think the sentiment in thomas more himself was in favor of freedom and in favor of peaceful living in other words uh, try not to hurt people uh in other words simply the golden rule isn't that the universal law and so, uh, don't do to anyone else what you don't want done to yourself, or vice versa, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, this, of course, is in the Bible. It's in the words of Jesus, but not only. He isn't the only one who taught this. And um, we also find um, about law, this great teaching in the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31 of the book of the prophet Jeremiah, um, this passage about the law, uh, that people will not need to teach each other anymore because the law will be written in their hearts. This is the great prophetic hope. This is the true utopia, is when the law is written in everyone's heart. So by nature and by instinct, we live together according to this golden rule, this universal rule of love. Is this possible? It's a promise. It's a prophecy. And the prophecy is repeated in the New Testament, what we call the New Testament, the Christian scriptures, the book of the letter to the Hebrews. The letter to the Hebrews quotes this long passage from, um, from Jeremiah, and it's actually the longest text from the Hebrew Bible which is quoted in the New Testament.
which means it must have been very important. I think it was important for Jesus. I think this is the um, sum total of the teaching of Jesus with regard to law and laws and so forth. The law is to be written in your hearts and you must make yourself accessible to this writing. God will write the law in your hearts and then you will live according to love and according to the golden rule. There's another Thomas of the 20th century, Thomas Merton. He's talking about the myth, the founding myth of America. America was conceived as the utopia. Huh? So America started to develop as colonies, of course, of Britain um, at the time of Thomas More. This is what Merton said, let me quote this. America is the earthly paradise. He puts this in quotation marks and the words are italicized. He's quoting this idea, you know? It's not his idea, but he's quoting it. To say that this was once a valid and creative myth is not to say that there was no basis of truth in it. On the contrary, this belief in the obvious possibilities of an immense new continent, a place fabulously endowed and blessed, had fantastic potency. The discovery of America galvanized and inebriated the Western world. It did more than anything else, even Copernicus and Galileo, to overturn the worldview of the Middle Ages. It revolutionized the thought of Western man. He was now convinced, that is, humans in the West, we're now convinced that human society was getting off to an entirely new start, words in italics. But the newfound land was a world without history, therefore without sin, therefore a paradise. To this world came the victims of a Europe grown old in wickedness with its history of arbitrary authority. To escape from history that is to say, from Europe, to escape from the burden of the past, to return to the source, to begin again a new history starting from scratch without original sin. This was what America offered to the oppressed, the persecuted, the unsuccessful, the disinherited, or the merely discontented. To be baptized by emigration, to leave one's sins and one's past in the Atlantic, to start out for a new life in the wilderness with one's hand in the hand of God, dot, 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 exclamation point. So he's very ironic here. Uh, he doesn't believe this. He doesn't believe it for a moment. But he's just making a great point here that uh, we've always been trying to realize this utopia. And what have we got now? Uh, the great American empire, uh, with its two wars and its failing economy and all of this. I don't want to sound anti-American. I love my country. But I also look at it with this kind of, well, a kind of a detached view. Uh, Merton has been a good teacher for me, as Thomas More and others. And so, anyway, this is what I want to suggest, that, that the search for a land that doesn't need laws is a search for a land that is innocent of history. And yet, we all have history. We live as part of a, of a story that uh, will someday come to an end. And so, anyway, the, the way to uh, freedom has to pass through reality. The way to utopia is a, a very long journey that I believe will end in, in that uh, heaven of my hope where justice finally will abide because here I don't think it does.